Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 25 July 2022 coming to you today with another in our series of U.S. made knife reviews, a joint effort, a collaboration between the Apostle P channel on YouTube and Knives Ship Free, the best place to buy knives, period. So somewhere in the data for this video, it's going to show that it includes a paid promotion now, generally, you guys who have been following the USA Made Knife Review series know that Knives Ship Free supplies the knives for this content, free of charge, to the channel. Not the case with the knife you're looking at tonight. In fact, this is a knife that was a consignment that I snagged out of a sale a couple weeks ago. And <laughs> this is the ZT0640. It's a model of, of zero tolerance that I've sort of had my eye on for a while, and I was kind of just waiting for one to land in my lap, and one did. But I did pluck it out of the sale and keep it for my very own. And after carrying it for a week or so, I, I messaged Jay at Knife Ship Free and said, Hey, I noticed you've got some of these in stock. Would you mind if I did a U.S. made knife review on it and then <clears throat> generated an affiliate link to your site? Jay said, absolutely. You can do that with any knives that you come across that I have in stock. So we're going to do that tonight. So it will be designated as a paid promotion because of the affiliate link that will appear in the description. That link will take you directly to the product page for the ZT0640 at KnifeShipFree.com. And if you use that link uh, and proceed to a purchase, this channel will be uh, compensated in some small measure so it does help support the channel if you're going to buy one of these knives or any knife from knife ship free jump over there using this affiliate link and it will help out the channel okay that said why am i doing this review well because i love the knife <laughs> you guys know i love knife ship free and we're doing a review on the 640 because it's an awesome knife now you've been looking at it just sitting still here in front of the camera but let's kind of get into what makes it what it is First of all, this is an Ernest Emerson design, and it really wasn't until I decided to grab this that I looked into what this knife consists of and what its historical elements are. I always knew that this blade looked like an Emerson Gentleman Jim, and it does. It looks a lot like it in length, in proportion, in grind geometry, except for the fact that it's a V-grind instead of a chisel. The handle, though, definitely not Gentleman Jim. You know, I knew I recognized this handle, and I really wasn't familiar with the Emerson model that it emulates. That is the Emerson Viper. I'll roll a picture in here so you can see it. And then I thought, okay, the blade's a little different than a Viper. It's really a Gentleman Jim. The handle is all Viper. And then I looked a little closer, and I went, wait a minute. I recognize that handle shape. Let's see. I went to my went to my collection room and I grabbed the knife that it, that it looks like and here it is, guys. Look at the outside envelope design of both of those handles. They are virtually from a design standpoint identical. <clears throat> the 710 a little larger knife than the 640. And so everybody knows, designer, designer of the 710, at least the lock, McHenry and Williams, this is an Emerson design. Now, this is where it gets kind of interesting, I think. Most of you know, during the time when the 710 was under development, Benchmade was the original equipment manufacturer for Emerson knives back in the 90s before, before Ernie and the boys had their own factory. So I, I would assume a lot of time was spent together. So uh, Emerson got manufacturing capability from Benchmade, and Ernie got, let's just say, some design philosophy from Benchmade. Kind of interesting. First there were Benchmade made Emersons. Then there were Emerson made Emersons. There still are, but now there are ZT made Emersons. I'm going to tie all this together for you as we start talking about the knife, but... Uh, yeah, I definitely see a family resemblance. 
Okay, so that's kind of what we got. Let's talk about dimensions. We have a blade length of three and three quarters inches, which frankly, after carrying it for a week and then measuring it, it's shockingly long because it doesn't seem like that big a knife as I carry it day to day. Blade steel on this one is CPM 20 CV. Let's see if I can get that to show up in the camera. We have a uh, uh, sort of an average height saber grind in, in grinder satin, stone wash flats, and then a grinder satin swedge. On, I guess you'd call that, what, a California clip? Can you really call it a muskrat clip on a modern folder? I don't know. The handle is constructed of 6AL4V titanium. And I'm going to call it a frame lock, even though it has scales that cover most of the handle with some reveals. Very stylish reveals, by the way, and comfortable as well. But So it's a titanium frame lock, but the end of the lock bar obscured by the scale or protected by the scale. So you're not going to pinch the lock shut when you're trying to open it. I call that death lock. ZT, ZT sometimes suffers from a lot of their uh, frame lock ball bearing flippers. If you have your fingers on the lock bar when you're trying to flip them, the, the knife actually locks shut. That's not going to happen with this design. And it is a steel inserted titanium frame lock. I think you should be able to see into the blade well and see that steel insert. So you're not going to get any lock stick. This one does lock up pretty early, about as early as I'd ever like to see it. It is rock solid though, no slip, no stick, no rock. Blade centering on this one is totally squared away. Handle length, four and three quarters. So three and three quarter inch blade, four and three quarters handle. Just sort of, a, I guess you'd call that benchmark blade to handle ratio, an inch difference uh, in handle and blade. The scale material is a green weave carbon fiber. Uh, we'll talk about the scale as we go on. It's Let's just say it's not a darling of the knife community. Thickness of the handle is 0.545 inches, 545 thousandths. And frankly, again, it doesn't seem that thick as I carry it every day. I think it's because of the aggressive chamfering and the way the scales are set back from the edges of the handle. Blade thickness, it's kind of chunky. 154 thousandths by my caliper, about 530 seconds of an inch. And again, not a super high saber grind. So it's a little bit of a wedgy knife. And I have sharpened this one to an angle that just about replicated the factory geometry, 18 degrees per side. And you can see it's not overly broad, but not overly narrow either. It's kind of a thickish blade. Nicely reinforced tip. The height of the blade, exactly an inch. The height of the knife closed, which is kind of an important dimension we don't spend enough time talking about on pocket knives. But it's an inch and an eighth from the top of the spine of the knife to the back of the spine of the handle. Just to put that in perspective, a Benchmade 940 is an inch and a sixteenth. So although this seems to be a larger knife, it's only a sixteenth taller in that dimension than a 940. And then for reference, a Paramilitary 2 is an inch and five eighths. So a full quarter inch to the hump, uh, bigger than this one, and you notice it in pocket. This knife, as large as, as large as it is, veritably disappears in the pocket. Very, very nice. Okay, let's talk about the mechanics. Deployment is via thumb disc, which is attached with a T8 Torx. And, you know, let's face it, guys. Thumb discs are not the favorite method of deployment for most of us. However, now, there's no Emerson Wave on this knife. There's just the disc. But I'll tell you what, much like a 940, the natural thumb tension that your hand builds just in its natural position, you, know, you look at the angle of the disc to the pivot and the angle that your thumb naturally wants to go, there's just a little built-in tension. Thumb wants to go this way. That axis from pivot to, to disc goes this way. So in a natural position, you're just going to build tension and then pop it and out it flies. This knife, not quite a free dropper as I have it set up, but silky smooth. 
and you know I've said this before but this is a lot more natural position after opening a knife for your hand to be in a cutting position than a flipper okay that's a I'll take studs discs and holes over flippers any day of the week pivot suspension is done by phosphor bronze washers and they work perfectly very much like the old ZTO 550 very much like the uh, 620s and 630s the Emerson designs ZT knows how to do a phosphor phosphor bronze pivot correctly and this knife is no exception let's see what else can I tell you let's talk about ergonomics for a minute because they are stunning on this knife and frankly although these knives these two knives have about the same handle shape the 640 is a more ergonomic knife than the 710 in my hand um, in the saber grip it's beautiful the widely spaced jimping is deep enough and sharp enough to just grab your thumb in the overhand pinch grip it's beautiful it's not the handle's not too fat that it feels ungainly in the hand in the hammer grip it, it's hand filling and natural and very comfortable in the draw cut grip this is probably the one grip that it's a little weak it, there seems to be a little gap between the spine and my index finger in a natural grip but again I don't know if that's a grip I use a lot this is probably my most common and the knife is super comfortable in a reverse grip it's money super comfortable and secure rest for the thumb and then in that sort of uh, draw cut grip vertical it's very comfortable so great ergos on the handle just a super good pocket knife guys probably designed as a tactical knife but you know if you think about the blade shape and then in the uh the name of the Emerson that bears this blade, the Gentleman Jim. This is more of a carry knife than a tactical knife, right? As Emersons go, it's the Sunday go to meeting knife. <laughs> okay, so overall, super pocket knife. And by the way, I didn't really change my geometry on the cutting edge, but I sure did make it better. This is after some use glides effortlessly through the Smoky Mountain Knife Works catalog paper, which this is what this is about what paper knife catalogs are for using as a good test media. So overall, I dig it. I so dig it. And it, here's why. There have been very few ZTs that I've bought and wanted to keep. And generally it's because of well, it's something we don't like to talk about. And Mike Stewart said this, a guy who's, who wasn't, and I, go, I don't think he had turned 70 yet when he said this, but he said to me, Rob, we don't sell knives, we sell pictures. And ZT certainly sells pictures. They make great Instagram knives. They look superb on your Facebook, po on your Facebook profile. <clears throat> generally they suck as tools because they're too fat they're too heavy they're too broad and their designs are cartoonish and this kind of goes back to their origins right the uh, the 300s the Ken onion knives were ridiculously thick and broad uh, <clears throat> the hinderer ZTs you know if, if hinderers were too thick ZT didn't help the situation um, the 550 which was my favorite one of the bunch was too thick and blocky the 560 and 561 were just oversized overly broad and floppy um, the Rexford knives were blocky uh, what was the one that I really liked oh help me out guys carbon fiber black blade was it 0204 something like that but just again just a little out of proportion size wise this knife well Let's think about its design origins, the 1990s, before social media, when uh, when knives were sold by guys looking at them in a display case, picking them up, putting them in their hand, um, and knives were designed by guys who wanted to make a tool, not someone who wanted a knife that looks cool on Instagram. Um, 
So I think this is just a huge score for, Z, for ZT. And I hope that they, I hope that they look at this knife and they think about from whence it comes. And they think we need to get back to that. We need to get back to that. Uh, Cause frankly, this knife isn't that impressive in pictures, especially with the scale. So let's talk about the scale. Uh, and I think it's, almost perfect and here's why I say that I don't think the green and black carbon fiber would look particularly bad in fact I think it would look kind of handsome if they finish the whole scale and ZT has a bad habit of this they'll do a carbon fiber weave scale they will machine chamfers and other details and then they leave that that raw outer crust mm -hmm. unmachined and Frankly, it looks funny. And I think I might try this as my ownership of the knife goes on, but I think I'm just going to set and finish that. Uh, I think it'll look better. And I, I have a feeling if ZT had done that, frankly, if they would do it on many of their knives instead of just leaving that raw crust, I think their knives would be a lot more attractive. So there's that. However, the scale, I think, adds very much to the ergonomics of the knife. And we learned this with the Gale Bradley Spider Co's, didn't we? That if you reveal liners and create steps uh, as we go around that corner, it almost acts like a radius in our hand and makes the knife super comfortable. And the same is true for the 640. Nicely, nicely done. So that leaves us one thing. It's the elephant in the room, or is it? This is the clip that comes standard on the 640. Um, it's an abomination. <laughs> and I love Kershaw, I love ZT, I, you know, I, I love the company, not necessarily all the ZT products, but many, many Kershaws over the years have appealed to me greatly, but they've made some of the worst clips ever. Um, you know, the old Kershaw butter knife clip, kind of the same problem as this one which is inserting into pocket, especially that butter knife. It's so doggone stiff. But let me close the knife up, and I'll put the clip up onto the knife on the right-hand carry side. And I just want you to look at the gap, or lack thereof, in the end of the clip. Um, if you're wearing anything with a pocket seam thicker than dress pants, good luck getting that knife in your pocket. Um, it, I mean, it made me laugh. It was such a pain. And then there's this issue. Um, with, with the knife in pocket, you're going to have about that much of it sticking up. Almost an inch of knife sticking out of your pocket. So... I took this clip off and I thought, I wonder if that's a Benchmade hole pattern because Benchmade loves me and they send me clips for no reason. So I just happened to have a Parkerized Deep Carry Benchmade clip with the butterfly. And oh my, look what that does. It makes that almost an inch out of pocket, three eighths ish. And it gives me a nice gentle clip tension with plenty of gap at the end to get in even cargo shorts or pants so that works and you know what i think it's kind of cool you've got an emerson design made by its new oem zt with a clip from its original oem benchmade so i think it all makes sense in my mind so here's my here is my exhortation to you guys. Even I, at age 56, collecting knives for 45 years, have fallen prey to the Instagram knife mentality. And sometimes it's nice to find a knife that's modern, but it's a really good tool. Is it the most impressive knife to take pictures of? Heck no. Is it one of the best three and three quarter inch bladed modern tactical slash EDC folders you can buy? Absolutely it is. Absolutely. I really encourage you guys to pick one of these up. So let's 
let's kind of uh, let's kind of recap the pros and cons, shall we? First of all, carryability. Just a little over half an inch thick with nice chamfered slash rounded corners. Only an inch and an eighth high from spine to spine in the pocket. Ergonomics are superb, both in deployment, in closing, and in gripping and cutting. Next con would be stellar deployment for phosphor bronze washers with a thumb disc. Perhaps the best of that combination I've ever had in my hand. And then general utility. It's a good enough slicer. Did I show you that? I don't know, did I? It's a good enough slicer, not great. But not bad. Do that even on camera? I might have missed it. Let's do it again. Yeah, that's better. Um, yeah, it's a great slicer, but but not overly thin. It is a robust pocket knife. So pros: carryability, ergonomics, deployment, and general utility. Cons: really one and a half. Um, the clip sucks. This much better. Uh, offer a deep carry option, ZT. And then what most people classify as ugly scales. Um, would this bother me? No, it wouldn't. Might I try to make it a little bit nicer satin? Maybe. But I don't know for sure. I don't mind it the way it is. It's just a nondescript, classy, hard-working, Emerson Design ZT. Not a bad combination at all. So, again, guys, if you're interested in picking one of these up, or if you just want to go look at them on Knife Ship Free and then go buy something else, please use my affiliate link. It is in the description, and it does help the channel if you do that. I believe that's all for this one. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the word is sharp. I'll talk to you soon.